If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. This has been another episode sponsored by Online Horse College. If you haven't had a look at the wide variety of equine-specific accredited courses, then go to onlinehorsecollege.com and I'll see you over there. If you need help with copywriting, public relations, social media, email marketing, graphic design or website design, talk to Sophie Barrington at Archer Creatives. She gives a wide variety of service to help you increase your bottom line through investment in marketing dollars. Simply go to horsechats.com, search for Sophie, search for Barrington or search for Archer Creative and give her a call. Now, today's guest is another person who's combined their horse skills and their coaching skills with another skill. We're going to talk to Kay Sullivan, who's combined her administration skills with her equestrian skills. How are you today, Kay? Yeah, it's very good, Belinda. Thank you very much. Very good. Very good. Kay, we're going to talk a bit more about how you've combined your administration skills and your horse skills. But before that, have you got a favorite quote for us? Yes, I do. Actually, um, I have to go Star Wars here. So I'm with the force and the force is with me. So when I work with horses, I um, I just, because I've been doing it for so long, for 36 years now, I just have this, um, this trust in myself that the horses do understand me and mm-hmm. just, you know, having the confidence and uh, making the horses feel good, it just makes me feel relate to the force from Star Wars for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, certainly horses certainly know when you go in with confidence and with experience and um, yes. will behave a, a lot different to someone who's a bit nervous and a bit afraid. True, true. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, this unique skill that you've got, you're a professional coach and you're also a professional admin person. When did it come together that you started combining the two? You said that you've got 15 years with horses, but how long since you've been working in the industry as an administrator or working as an administrator in the horse industry? So I would probably say since a year or something like that. Mm-hmm. So yes. um, I've been coaching since 2003 and I've got a very extensive um, administration background. Um, you know, I've got degrees and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just thought, you know, it's I just love the idea of helping people and, uh, you know, stable owners with all the stuff that they sometimes just can't get done because they're too busy riding or fixing fences or cleaning tack. So I can actually assist them with my skills as a administrator because I do got the insights of the industry. So I actually have got this background knowledge of the horses and I know what's required to run busy stables. And um, yes, I can understand and relate to their field sort of thing. And Kay, I've got to be you know, serious here because sometimes it's not about the time. Sometimes it's about the priorities. And and I know as a horse person, I'd just rather be outside doing something with my horse than inside worrying about the books. You know, it, it's it's just yeah, priorities, yeah. isn't it? You know that that we say right, yeah. well, we're better. And the other thing is too that if you're not a specialist at something, you're better off using your time for what you're a specialist at and paying someone else for their time for what they're good at. That's it. Yep. That's it. So, yep. yeah, I, I love admin and I love horses. So combining the both, the two together was just, you know, a very good idea. And it works, though. It actually, it, it helps people and it also, you know, helps people to declutter their desk and get yes. things done and, yes. you know. And, um, yeah, helping other people out with that. So Okay. Now, normally I say what are the core skills that would be, you know, in your position. But thinking of three, you know, the type of person – that you are able to help? Is it the busy horse person, the professional horse person that has specific horse skills that just either doesn't like doing the uh, administration or prefers not to? Is that the sort of person that you work with? Um, You know, it varies uh, 
completely from mm -hmm. what sort of uh, people I work for. So it can be busy, you know, competitors who don't have time for a fold and horse registration yep. or, you know, they need someone to do their photo or video editing for sales horses. You know, they mm -hmm. just want to move the stock because they've got so many, you know, new ones coming and going. They've got a busy stable. They've got stock coming and going all the time. And uh, sometimes you just don't have the time to, to do these you know, okay. tasks that are – you know, need to be done at the uh, at the desk, and um, yeah, so it, it varies. So I also had you know people that have got their own horse riding sales, and they just needed help with policies and procedures because it's a uh, requirement for in uh, for their yes, uh, industry requirement. Sort of yes. Thing, and just, yes. 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 Okay. So I've done that a fair few times. So, yeah. Okay. So what makes it that you're happy to do the admin part of it, you know, because I know that you, you love horses and you love the working with horses, but what do you have? Is it the patience? Is it the skill? What What do you have that other people don't have? Well, I would say I'm quite computer savvy. Okay, so, good. So yep. um, I've got the computer knowledge and, you know, the editing things and, you know, doing documents and spreadsheets and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, email management. So I've got the technical skills and um, I've also got, you know, I've been working in administration since 1997 and um, writing since 1983 and working in the horse industry since 2003. So it's just all through experience, really. Coming so together. So that it all comes together. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and working with a few different people in the industry. What's the best thing about working in the horse industry? Ah, it's probably, yeah, definitely working with the horses and doing what I love. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love the feeling of sitting in the office and uh, I work at the very busy riding school in Adelaide here and uh, hearing the neighing and the candering hoofbeats while I'm sitting in the office. <laughs> and uh, there's, this, <laughs> there's this great saying, do what you love and you don't have to work a single day in your life. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Living, the, living the dream, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at the moment you're doing some work I'm just trying to think the stables that you're working for or you, you're working for Megan Jones is that right yeah that's correct so I work yeah, for Megan yeah. yep Megan Jones question track yeah yeah so that that's another one where you you have an elite rider who just would be better off just continuing to ride a horse and you just keep helping her with the admin side yeah Okay, what about, have you got any case studies? You know, I mean, you've got Megan there that you're you're helping. She's probably a good, as good a case study as any. You know, someone that you've just been able to come in and change their life around because you can say, right, well, I'll do all this admin stuff. You just keep doing all your all the stuff that you do well. Yeah, so I worked for uh, a lady in Batemans Bay. She also had a, a riding school and she was also doing rescue horses and uh, she was just more on the horsey side in the mm -hmm. stable and, um, you know, looking after the horses. And I said, okay, I'll come in and go to your office. And you know, she told me to do this and this and that. And uh, it just freed her up a lot. And uh, so she got, you know, everything done. So it really helped her out a lot. Though. Okay, good, good. Now, for people who are trying to manage themselves, trying to manage and say, no, I've got time, I can do all the horses, I've got a certain amount of time each day. For some organisation skills or office administration skills, what would you tell them are key priorities in their office, what they should be focusing on to get themselves organised? Okay, so I would always recommend prioritise an ABC. Mm -hmm. So what's most important, what can wait and what is you know, it can be done in three weeks. So prioritising your workload, um, creating a plan for every day, what needs to be done. And um, also, you know, people need to be aware that they always get their emails and their social media, um, you know, do all the worming, all the record management. You know, when you've got livestock, you also have to do, you know, the ferry and all the, yeah, the record management. That's really important. And... And they also have to do their learning as well. So all their, um, you know, their teaching and also their um, training as well. So, yeah, so lots to do there. Okay, okay. Person. <laughs> so they're prioritising their workload, which could be horses or could be their office work. 
okay, a plan for every yeah. day, like if they've got certain things to do, they should say, even have it in a diary or something, right, I'm doing this on Monday, this on Tuesday, this on Wednesday. So rather than have a, a big long, I've got to do this and this and this and getting overwhelmed, breaking it down mm. and saying, this is what I need to achieve today and, and making sure they achieve it. Because if you've got one, if you're tired and overwhelmed and you just want to finish for the day, but you've got something in your diary that's today's job, you somehow can find the energy to do one thing. But if you're overwhelmed and you've got, you know, 10 things to do, doing one thing is going to be a lot easier than even facing 10 things. True, true. Mm-hmm. But sometimes also breaking a big task into smaller steps that mm-hmm. sometimes help to, to take the pressure off, you know, the project management. So yep. definitely. So to achieve a which step. What sort of big task yeah. would be broken down into achievable steps? Um, big task would probably, you know, if you have to uh, write up a, I'm sorry about example, um, if you have to have a policies and procedures for okay. your um, and for your uh, insurance, mm-hmm. um, and they require risk assessment plus they're gonna. You know, they require a lot of things so that you can actually legally operate, you know, that yes. work with children, friendly policy. So there's a lot of policies involved. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so just making an overview instead of a brainstorm. So yep. brainstorming and mind mapping really helps to break down the task. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Sounds good. Now, what about you thinking as a coach for a busy riding school? Is there anything that people can do as a coach for the horse side of things to help organise themselves? You know, we've been talking about organisation within the office, but what about organisation within the stables? What can they do there just to give themselves that little bit of extra time? So... I think what would be really good to keep um, good records for every horse. So yep. um, having like an overview, so like having like a photo of the horse, having all the identification of the horse and, um, you know, when has it been wormed last, when has the farrier was there last and, you know, when was like the vet there and what was the issue so keeping a, a track record of all horses, so if anything occurs in the future, and also if you want to sell this horse on, maybe later on, so that you can pass this on, so that people have got a bit of a history about that horse, because horses are just like characters. They're so individual. So every time that I meet a new horse, in my mind, it's just opening this mental maintenance book for that horse, because they're just, they all come with a story. They all come with certain confirmations. They all come with like... Um, you know, I don't like this or always do this. So all horses are just so individual and that's, mm-hmm. that's um, yeah, so that's, yeah, keep, keeping a bit of a track record about all horses and making sure, yeah. All right. Anything else they can do just to help with the organisation of the running the riding school? You must come across quite a lot, you know, because you've worked in a couple of busy centres as an administrator. So what sort of things would you come into a busy centre and say, right, this is going to help the riding school more? Mm -hmm. So um, marketing, keeping on top of the bookings, um, foal and horse registration, lesson plans is a big thing, uh, especially when you're uh, at Equestrian Australia uh, coach, it's always good to have a good set of uh, lesson plans so yep. you actually yep. know what you're going to teach. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, all the record management and ordering all the supplies and fees and keeping on top of all the industry standards as they as they change, making sure that the staff is educated. So mm-hmm. there's a lot to it. When it's I'm not I'm at this stage I'm working at the riding school. But obviously, there's also a lot of, of other clientele and other horse yes. people out there. You know, yeah. uh, a racing stable probably has completely different uh, requirements than a riding school or a, a beach ride uh, organisation or, you know, doing tracks out in Victoria country. So they're all very individual and they're very uh, in, in the nature that they are doing. Right? Yeah, yeah. so it's probably good just to touch base with you if you're not sure, you know, because you'd have a bit of a handle and if they say, well, we do this, you can put it into policies and procedures and make sure that they're compliant. Yeah, Correct. yeah. Absolutely. Okay, and, and Kay, can, they can call you video evidence and, and do lots of online stuff. So it doesn't really matter where they are. 
they can contact you online. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so it's totally remotely. So I can actually do this uh, admin assistance for stable owners worldwide because, you know, we've got Skype, we've got email, we've got phone. Yes. So in the, in the modern day and, day and age, we mm-hmm. can mm-hmm. still work remotely. So, yeah, All so right. that's a very good opportunity. Yes. Yep. So going forward and just looking at the future, what are you working towards? You know, working towards obviously more being in contact with more people and helping them with their administration, but anything else? Have you got any young horses coming on? Have you got anything else that you're working on horse-wise? Um, yes, I've got a very interesting uh, project at the moment, which I'm going to uh, would really like to do some tricks. And um, so I'm, I'm working on that at the moment. And the future, yeah, I would like to have my own school pony for my own property. Um, that would be the ideal dream. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm on my way, I would say. So when you say you're working on your own tricks, is that with a horse to teach them tricks or what do you mean there? Yeah. Yes, That's, yes. So I'm just, um, you know, I'm trying to teach them to bow and, you know, doing side steps. He's, he's very good and very educated already, but... It's always just for me learning new things as well. I love to learn new things. I'm mm-hmm. always curious what's around the next one that I haven't tried before. So I'm constantly learning and experimenting and um, trying to improve my own horse riding skills and um, also my training methods as well. Okay, good, good. Now, if you were summing up your philosophy about administration within the horse industry, what could you say to our listeners just in a couple of sentences? Um. Don't put it off too long. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, the, the the pile on your desk is growing and growing, and then one day you won't be able to sort of tackle it. Mm-hmm. And um, keep organising yourself. Um, make sure that you know, obviously, your yard is running smoothly, and um, that all the horses are well fed and organised, and also that you've got time for your own sort of riding rather than always thinking about the, the scary admin things that it's waiting. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. the next sales horse to put on. So, you know, and if you've got um, the time and the budget to outsource these sort of things, then I'm the person for it. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. All right, yeah. Kay, if people need to contact you, what's the best way? Um, the best way to contact me would probably my website is um, uh, www.bay horsecare.com mm-hmm. and uh, on that website I've got all my email addresses. People can also uh, contact me via LinkedIn yep. and um, just search up for Kay, Kay Sullivan and um, yes, I'm, Go from there. I'm happy to, yes, that's it. Okay, or right, and those details of course will be on horsechats.com so it's horsechats.com slash Kay Sullivan or go to horsechats.com, search for Kay or search for Sullivan and you'll find those details and towards the bottom of the page we'll have all Kay's contact details if you need to get in contact with her as well. Okay, and yes, Kay, something good and I love to see that people are bringing in other skills as well as their horse skills to make it so they still have a career in the horse industry, you know, with a combination of skills. I think there's lots of careers, lots of work within the horse industry, but you've got to come in with qualifications and with some expertise. You can come in with no qualifications and no expertise, but you've just got to keep learning and keep growing and keep getting out there and uh, expanding your opportunities. So thanks for coming and talking to us today. We'll hopefully talk to you again sometime soon. Thank you very much for having me, Glenis. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Now, if you're still there, you probably know that I'm absolutely passionate about education within the horse industry. That's why I host this podcast. My other venture is Online Horse College. Have a look now at onlinehorsecollege.com and I'll see you over there. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below.